Hi friends, this is Joe. If you're watching this on YouTube, it looks a little different this week and that's because uh, we just got some new furniture and Valerie is in the midst of rearranging everything. And uh, so this is temporary once she gets everything set up. I don't know how things will look, but I really do like this bookshelf uh, behind me with all the, the knickknacks. Uh, James asked me if this was real. It is. Like, I can touch the elephant and everything. Uh, and I don't care. Can you see the skull staff? That's actually kind of cool. Uh, it was for a costume uh, for Lauren that Valerie made. Uh, Valerie's great at making costumes. Anyway, uh, we're getting off topic. Today, I'm going to give you a adventure seed. Actually, a hex crawl seed. And we'll talk about what I mean by that. So... You know what a adventure seed is, right? It's the idea for an uh, blah, blah. it's the idea for an adventure that's not fleshed out. It's an inspiration for you to take and run with, and have fun with. Like no maps, you do all that yourself. I love adventure seeds, um, and when I came up with this one, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. This would make adventure good adventure seed. But the more I thought about it, I was like. This is actually the good basis for a hex crawl. So I've never heard of a hex crawl seed before, but I made one. This is a hex crawl seed. And I call it, I don't know what I call it, Mossbeard for now. Uh, maybe the fate of Mossbeard, Mossbeard's tomb. I don't know, maybe just Mossbeard. Um, he's the, the central character in this. So I like hex crawls. I love to run hex crawls, you know, gives the players the freedom to to explore but what I found that some players and we actually had a full episode about this uh, where James was talking um, they, they spin their wheels because they don't know what they're supposed to do and you know the whole idea in the hex hex crawl is that there is nothing that you're supposed to do you go do whatever you want and if it's set up right and I try to set mine up right no matter which way you go you will stumble across something that gives you something to do but like I said uh, some players like James I'm not throwing him under the bus he will freely admit this like never is able to commit to any one direction because they go there and they come across something and he's like, well, is this what I'm supposed to do? And then he goes and he stumbles across something else and he's like, is this what I'm supposed to do? And analysis paralysis, I use that phrase for him a lot, but th there you go. He, I guess he overthinks things. Uh, that's something you can tell me, James. But yeah, so he doesn't know what to do. And this, I was like, wow, you can throw them at them and there's kind of a structure there and they can pursue it. But on their way to pursue it, they're going to have to do some exploration. And there you go. There's the, the hex crawl. So the, the layout is this. In the beginning of the adventure, somehow the players come across this poem, which... If you're listening on the podcast, you can hear crinkling in my hands right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you saw me holding it. Uh, so anyway, there's this poem that I wrote. It's not my best work, but it will work for an adventure. Uh, my claim is because it was originally in Dwarvish, and I translated it to English. <laughs> anyway, uh, and a map. And maybe they found it on uh, the remains of some adventurer. Uh, or maybe it was sold to them by somebody. Or maybe they found it in a chest somewhere. It doesn't make a difference. They came across it. And that leads to an idea of, hey, there's treasure to be found. Maybe. We'll talk about that in a second. And, uh, and then with the map, it gives them sort of a rough guidance of what they can do as they go out exploring. Uh, but there's nothing so laid down to say the treasure is here. So they have to hex crawl to find it. Maybe looking for some of the clues. So let me read you the poem. And again, it's untitled. I just call it Mossbeard because it's about a dwarf named Mossbeard. Mossbeard, a dwarf of honest heart, toiled deep for the mountain's art. His people's needs his guiding light. He labored on both day and night. When trolls attacked, his courage shone. He stood his ground, a stalwart stone. With his spirit strong and his cause just, he reduced his foes to eternal dust. In a cavern dark was a glittering horde. Mossbeard discovered gold's curse reward. With eyes alight and his heart of fire, wealth became his sole desire. 
He led his kin to the battlefield, for naught but gold their doom was sealed. They pillaged, plundered, and took their fill, no matter who they had to kill. Mossbeard, consumed by gold's dark kiss, locked himself in a deep abyss. Surrounded by the fruit of gold's gilded sin, he turned away from kith and kin. In that golden hoard he lay to rest, encased in wealth his soul suppressed. In the golden chrysalis sealed, a new form was soon revealed. In that slumber deep a dragon grew, with yellow eyes and scales blue. Moss spirit was gone, but the beast remained, a guardian of his wealth attained. That's the poem. Uh, if you didn't follow the storyline as I was doing it, it's about this, this dwarf named Moss spirit, and he's a good dwarf. He's a hard worker. He works, you know, uh, at the forge. And one day there's a troll attack, and he goes and he fights the trolls, and a little space from there he finds a treasure, gold. But this gold fills him with with gold fever. And in his desire for more and more gold, he rallies his people and they go out on unjust wars just to increase their coffers. And he gets all this gold and until he can't take it anymore and he gathers it all in one place and he goes down and his lust for gold actually transforms him into a dragon, a blue dragon specifically, I said in the poem, uh, just because it rhymed. Um, yeah. And uh, so that's the poem. I'll talk more about that in a second, about my inspirations for that. And, and then there would be a map. I suck at map drawing. So if you, dear listener, want to give me a map, I will love you forever. Um, I'll talk more about that too. Um, I did ask AI to draw one. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll probably see it right around here. But I don't consider that a map. I, I'm not sure I could run with that. But anyway, uh, although maybe it's been good enough to give to the players. I don't know. Anyway, um, so but on the map are some annotations. And the annotations are thus. Um, and the way I have this envisioned in my head, not that I can see things in my head, but you know what I mean. Um, on certain points of the map are just a letter. And off to the side are these annotations, or maybe on the side of the poem, the letter and the annotation. Uh, and some of these line up with parts of the poem, and so you could actually have them off to the side in the margins. But anyway, uh, one annotation says, where the hammers fell, so did he. And uh, that's referring, of course, to the forge in the beginning of the poem. Uh, the next one says, once a battleground, now a silent tomb, that is the troll's lair, although it could easily be one of the the forgotten battles that they they fought just to uh, gain more treasure. Another one says, "Where greed began, also yeah, <laughs> where greed began, does it also end?" And that is the location where he first found the treasure. Another annotation says, "Hidden amongst the trees." A secret awaits. In my mind, that's just one of the battles that they fought. fought. This one was in a forest. My, in my mind, it was against elves. Of course, in your campaign, it could be anything you wanted it to be. Another one says, Rebirth in the shadows of battle. And this is a, a fallen fort. Again, another fort that they defeated in their battles. Uh, last one just says, Whispers of gold, echoes of fate. And this is just in the mountains somewhere. Uh, and then the last annotation on there just says Temple of Atonement. <clears throat> so here's my thoughts. So all those annotations on the map, they were made by a treasure hunter who was looking for Boss Beard's treasure. And of course, the adventurers just stumbled into this. Okay, simple enough. My other thought is, what is the adventurer's goal? Are they going to go kill the dragon and take its gold? Do they think that's what the, the goal of the adventure is? Um, I guess I'm doing kind of the 76 patrons now thing now, right? We're giving you various possibilities what it could be. Um, 
So maybe it's just a poem. Maybe there is no treasure. Maybe the treasure was taken long ago. Um, but <laughs> assuming that there is a treasure and there is a dragon, then there's, there's two issues at play here. The first of all, the whole poem is a warning, right? He got this gold and he was consumed by the desire for more and more. And in the end, it destroys him. Is that a treasure you really want? Will players pick up on that? I don't know. I got the feeling, I, I was kind of feeling James out and I didn't want to say exactly, this is what I'm thinking, what do you, but he, he never gave a straight answer. So I, I don't know if he picked up on that or not. The next thing I was thinking, that the, it's the whole reason for the Temple of Atonement. Wouldn't it be neat if your thought was actually, he was a good dwarf once. Maybe we can save him. Maybe we can turn him back into the dwarf he was. And that gives you a great excuse to use the subdual rules for dragons and, you know, D&D and AD&D. &D. So, um, yeah, there's my thoughts there. So, yeah, really, that's it. Um, I did show, I showed this to James. I showed this to my friend, Peter. Um, Peter said, you know, is that original? Were you inspired by something? Um, I was inspired by something. I was inspired by a 19th century opera and a 13th century Nordic poem. So the opera, of course, is Wagner's uh, Das Rheingold, uh, part of his ring cycle. So in Das Rheingold, there is a character called um, Albrecht. I'll just call him Al because I can't say those German <laughs> sounds. Uh, and in the story, so in the story, the Rhine maidens, they're like water nymphs, they're spirits of the river Rhine, right? Are guarding the gold at the bottom of the, the Rhine. And Al wants it, so he forsakes love in order to get the gold. That's, that's the trick in the opera. And so he gets the gold and he forges a magic ring out of it. Hmm, does this sound familiar? Um, and he's also so consumed with gold fever now that he forces all his uh, dwarven followers to mine more and more gold. And he also makes a helmet that can turn you invisible. Huh, magic ring, uh, item that can turn you invisible. Was, was this influence for Tolkien? Yeah, I, I think they were both influenced by the same sources. Um, yeah, and eventually Odin wants the ring, but now we're getting far afield. Um, so that was one inspiration, was a mid-19th century opera, part of the Wagner's Ring Cycle, the first one, really, uh, Das Rheingold. The second inspiration is from the Volsunga, which, you know, they're... It's a mid 13th century, you know, 1250s, 1270s uh, poem, uh, part of the, you know, the, the Norse sagas. And in this one, there is a dwarf named uh, Fafner. And I guess we should back up a little. So the god Odin kills this man, and the man's father says, You. You owe me weird guild for it. And Odin's like, I'm, I'm a god. I don't owe you anything. You know, and the, the father's like, oh, where's your honor and all that. And so Odin gives him gold, but he puts a curse on it. So Fafner is the man's other son. And he's like, hey, dad, <laughs> kind of cool, all that gold you have lying around. You know what would be cooler? If that gold was mine. <laughs> And uh, so Fafner kills his father for the gold. And again, it's, it's cursed gold. And so he, he desires it and he has this gold lust and that greed turns him into a dragon. So you can see, uh, and if those sound all kind of close, that's because the Volsunga was one of Wagner, Wagner's inspirations uh, when he was writing the, the operas. So, uh, so that was my inspiration. I sort of combined those two, added some new elements uh, to make this. And this has got to be the geekiest thing I have ever said. Uh, yeah, you know, 19th century opera, 13th century poem. 
How geeky can you get? That's not even geeky. That's nerdy, right? I, I need the glasses with the tape in the middle uh, and the pocket protector. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the inspiration. That's the story. Uh, if you do run this for anybody, let me know. I would love to know. If you just think it's a great idea, let me know. Uh, again, if you can help with the maps, mm, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, to contact me, feedback at decahedron.com. You can leave comments in the comment box below if you're watching on YouTube. We have a feedback line. It's Someday I'm going to write that down because I keep on my phone and I use my phone to record this. Um, I think it's 562 RPG cast. Pretty sure. If not, I'm going to delete that out of there. So if you heard that, it's right. Uh, 562 RPG cast. I know that the RPG part is 774, but I can't remember what cast is off the top of my head. Um, yeah, uh, so there's that, there's that. Uh, you know, if you want to reach out to me on Discord, my name there is Snogen, S-N-O-W-G-E-N. But if you just send me a, a friend request or something without saying how you know me or something, I'm just going to ignore you. <laughs> um, so if you want to drop me an email at the feedback line first and let me know yours and I'll reach out to you, that would work. Um, yeah, all those ways to contact me. Oh, say hi.chat uh, slash decahedron. I'll put them in the show notes. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube, they have been already scrolling on your screen. Again, let me know what you think. I, I love to know. And again, if you want to do maps, if you want to reach out, I'm starting a new uh, thread for this on Discord, which is why I mentioned it. So if you want to reach out there, collaborate with me and maybe expand this out even a little more, that might be cool. So um, again, thanks for watching. And until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Dekihedron RPG podcast. Please come back again to the Dekihedron RPG podcast.